Good, great evening to you. It's your girl, Keely Tavener. I am here, hopefully I'm live tonight, and I'm going to be talking about why you fall in love with the wrong types. It happens to people, it happens an awful lot, and it can be very tricky, especially if you keep going round in vicious cycles and you wonder why do you keep making the same mistakes it happens, it's life, and it can be baffling and it can be difficult trying to work it all out, especially when we're trying to work it out all by ourselves. But that's what I'm here for. It's your girl, Key. I'm here to help you make sense of what your situation is. This video may make sense to you, it may not, but if you know someone that might benefit from it, feel free to share them. I'm going to be here shortly tonight. I'm not going to be staying for too long because it's been a long day. But I always have energy and love what I do. So if you're someone and you keep falling in love with the wrong types, you may have got to the point where you're like, what is this about? Why do I keep going for the same old, same old, same old? Well, if we want, like, there's usually three reasons why. We, you know what, there's usually lots of reasons why we go for the wrong types. I'm going to just give you three reasons why you go for the wrong types. Welcome, good evening, good evening. One of the reasons why you fall in love with the wrong types is often because for some of us, we may go for people that we want to change, that we see potential in them. And we might think that if we love them enough and care for them enough, that they will glad they might change. But that's one of the reasons. Some of us think that we are like, we'll see a, probably a demolition project and we think that we can change that. That can be one of the reasons why you end up going for the wrong types. The second reason why you might go for the wrong type is because you may have attachment issues. Now, that might be too deep for some people because some people just want the answers, right? You don't want to do the deep stuff. You just want to meet the man of your dreams and live happily ever after. Well, the reality is, as probably as you might be working out as you get older, that life doesn't work, always work on those terms. So sometimes we have to look, go back to be able to understand why we do what we do in the now but it may well have links to the past often about the way that we were loved or not loved by our parents so that's the second reasons why you might go for the wrong type lastly one of the reasons why you may end up falling in love with the wrong type of person is you may actually fall in love with what what is it? Needs and wants. I'm thinking about my book here. You may not know the difference between what you need and what you want. For some of us, I've been there, you know, what we like is not good for us. You know, what we need, we may not like. And what we want may not be good for us. And this is a really important um, skill to learn, to learn that actually what's good for me is what I like is not good for me. And that can be a very hard lesson and that can take time to get to understand that actually what I like is not good for me. So what you need, you may actually reject because we often opt for what we want. Now, I, I'm, I'm unashamed about doing self-disclosure. It's one of the things I do because I don't betray anybody's confidence if I self-disclose. So what I would say about that is I've had my troubles and often I've gone for what I've liked, what I've wanted but what I've wanted hasn't always been good for me. And as your girl Key is getting up in age, because I'll be 43 soon, it's really important that I, I, I am, it's about what is good for me, not necessarily what I want. And I think learning that skill is incredibly important for, for people. So good night, good welcome. It's your girl Keely Tavener. I am a psychotherapist. People come to me for all manner of life dilemmas because life is tricky out there. If you know what I'm talking about, give me a heart, give me a light so I don't feel like I'm out here all by myself tonight. What I'm talking about is why we fall in love with the wrong types and it can happen to any one of us. 
The challenge is when we fall in love with the wrong type and we go and we have the same kind of unhealthy relationship patterns, it can be particularly difficult for friends to understand. Sometimes your friends start to judge you and that gets really tricky when they start to judge us. And it's one of the reasons why if you've ever been there, you may have ended up in an unhealthy, intimate relationship, a toxic relationship. Because one of the factors, if we end up in one of those tricky relationships is we might stop telling friends, family, because we feel shamed, we feel embarrassed. So we get mute on it. And actually, that is not great for our greatness because it leaves us to being controlled and abused and we don't tell anyone. And sometimes some mayhem starts to happen. It always starts small and then it builds so this is one of the reasons we need to be articulate, we need to talk, talk to a friend, being isolated, especially if you go for the wrong types or you find yourself in a very tricky, intimate relationship. It's no two ways about it. It can be difficult. But there is often a reason, a reasonable explanation as to why you fall in love with the wrong types. And the reality is, for some of us, we need to go back into our past to understand the root cause of why we end up in relationships that just do not work for us. Some of us need to be single for a little while. We need to take time out and do some inner work. I know people don't like it because you want to live your best life and you want to have your partner on your side and show it off on the gram. However, Life doesn't always work like that. And sometimes it's beneficial for you to go inwards. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. I am a psychotherapist. People come to meet, see me for all manner of reasons. Fundamentally, it's always about life dilemmas, how we get stuck, but most importantly, what we need to do to be able to move out of sticky, tricky situations. Tonight, I'm talking, I'm taking any questions you may have about why you may fall in love with the wrong types because it's baffling and if you're anything like me you grow attached right and if you're attached to the wrong person well I don't know about you I'm happy to say it it can take a long while for us to unattach from that person because you may still have an emotional pull I'm here to tell you the inconvenient truth which is just because you have a bond and a connection with somebody, and it's a wonderful thing, it does not necessarily mean that you should be in a relationship with somebody. Sorry, someone has to say it. Sometimes we have to love from a distance. I love you, but I need to love you from afar because loving you up close ain't great for my greatness. Let's be having it because I know we all want to live our best life. Some people we need to love from a distance and that is wisdom but for many of us we get seduced by our feelings we get seduced by our emotions and so we go wherever they take us ha this ain't the movies yeah this is real life and so it is a wonderful thing to be led by your emotion huh isn't it wonderful however sometimes we must apply logic especially as we get up in age you know, we've got kids, we've got lifestyles that we need to maintain. And if you have a partner in your life, you fall in love with the wrong person, they can drain you, sister brother. Sister brothers, they can drain us. This is one of the reasons why sometimes we need to exercise caution and we need to understand it's not wise for us to be in bondage to our bond. A bond with someone is a beautiful way to build a relationship. It's a, it's a foundation for a relationship. However, it may not be sufficient. I'm here to tell you, my friends, it may not be sufficient. As, the, as my dear brethren Usher says, sometime you gotta let it burn. If you've got any questions about intimate relationships that you wanna fire at me before I decide to go home, then please do. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. I'm here tonight. I'm happy to talk about why we fall in love with the wrong types. For some of us, we are absolutely petrified of being on our own. Ooh, and if you're scared of being alone, you're going to tolerate the crumbs 
that some people throw at you. I don't know about you, but I guess I got to the point where I felt like I had to take a chance on me rather than... Because you know what? You know what happens? What I realised in my relationship was the liberties just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And when someone's liberties escalates, it also means your tolerance deteriorates, which means you end up accepting whatever you get. And that is just what I probably, I can assume, this isn't backed by statistics, so don't come and get me, but this is one of the reasons why so many of us end up feeling depressed and sad because, if the truth be told, it's usually our relationships. Not just the intimate relationships, friendships, family dynamics, we know that can get hairy sometimes, but the reality is, for many of us, it is actually our relationships that fuel our so-called mental health problems. Your girl Key is here to say and keep it real. I had a question. Thank you, Artie. You said, I feel like I've gone for a few types, but it is, but is it the type of person or more like the smaller personality traits that I'm missing that could be in all of them? I think sometimes when you've tried different types, like, ooh, 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 I think sometimes there's often a common thread that binds them. You know, so think about, is there a common thread that binds these individuals? Usually there is. So for example, I'm not saying this is your case, but for example, I know I had a habit of going for people that were emotionally unavailable. So they were kind of all different. You know, some were professionals, some were studying, some were, you know, doing the best they could with the resources available to them. However, the common thread was that they were emotionally unavailable. And so that was something that I had to begin to understand and to work out. What is it about me that means I attract those people to me? Usually it's because I would think I could love them enough, care enough, bend over backwards enough, and I could change them, that I would thaw out their cold hearts and make them burst with love and adoration for me. It didn't happen, and I became drained. Well, I mean, in the end, you just give up, right? So I think what I would say to you is, look if there is, there's a common thread, a common theme between them, even though there are different types. Sometimes that can be daddy issues, um, but, you know, at the same time, sometimes it can be mummy issues. So remember, from a kind of uh, attachment perspective, our relationships with our parents are often the blueprints for our intimate relationships. So if you get curious about, oh, keep going, you know, kind of that's that's the benefit of looking back to understand what we are going through now. I hope that was helpful to you, Artie. Do let me know. Good evening, Franz. How are you? So if you have any questions about your relationships, you know, and you're happy to ask a question, obviously this is a public forum. Please feel free to ask. Tonight we're talking about why we fall in love with the wrong types. And I've touched on one of the reasons is often about attachment issues. Second reason can be because we think we can change people if we love enough, care enough and do enough. And the third reason was, I can't remember, but let, I can just say sometimes it can be daddy issues. Sometimes it can be because we like a challenge. You know, we may also like a project. But addition, another reason why we might go for the wrong types, actually, it is a one for you. It can be because we're desperate. Now, people don't like to talk about desperate because it's not a good look, is it? Desperation. But it's OK. I'm here to own that for yourself. I know when I've been desperate, I've tolerated nonsense because for whatever reason, I may have been scared of being on my own. But for so many women we have a desire to be in relationship and because we desire that so desperately we might say yes to certain situations that people present us with when we kind of know we shouldn't but for some of us you another thing that can often happen to us ladies is say if you've invested so many years in a gentleman and you might be scared that if you give up, some other woman is going to benefit from all your hard work and efforts. And so because you don't want someone else to benefit from your hard work and efforts, you hold on. Is that good for you? 
I would suggest it's one of the uh, another one of the ways that we end up skipping down to have mental health problems, depression and sadness because you're holding on. And I would assume a higher part of you, if we talk about a higher self, we have a higher self and a lower self. If you know what I'm talking about, big up to all my paint to purpose graduates, you'll know about higher self and lower self is that usually our lower fear based self is in control. When your fear-based self is in control of your life, it often means that you make decisions sometimes where you get a short-term gain, long-term pain. It is what it is. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. I am a psychotherapist. I'm here tonight. I'm talking about why we go for the wrong types. And the reason why, you know, we go for the wrong types is serious out here. You know, some of us, we've got some issues you know, and let me tell you this, another thing that we do as well, big up to all the ladies and the gentlemen out there, um, another thing we do is um, we think the one, the person we meet will fulfill us, so a lot of us are running on this kind of Disney fantasy idea of intimate relationships, so we have this kind of um, expectation that we will meet the person and we will be complete, I'm sorry if you've been conditioned in that way relationships will often fall short and they won't give you that fix because the reality is if you want to be complete that is a journey that you need to make individually that is your unique journey on God's great earth I am not of the view that you will find that kind of completion in an intimate relationship humans change their mind all the time and so, you know, um, one of the issues that can happen in our in relationship is we can be become enmeshed. Enmeshed is where you lose yourself. And if you've someone who've, who's lost yourself in intimate relationships before because you've given your all and you had this expectation that the love you give would come back to you, then that can be very difficult, very difficult to understand. But you go, Key, I'm here to help people make sense out of nonsense because the more it baffles us is the more it can sit on our spirit. You know, when someone's you know, like, love can hurt, love can really hurt. And I, I would encourage you to begin to just meditate on this for a little while, like just chew on this, that when you allow someone into your life in an intimate way, you are giving them access to your preciousness i know a lot of you ladies out there now everybody's acting like they what, what do they want uh, friends with benefits oh like you can do that i don't get attached <sighs> for you're going against yourself for some of us we are acting like oh yeah you can just do the hook up link up friends with benefits but it actually doesn't work for you because you do go attached because you do develop feelings. And so what you do is you end up lying to yourself and stuffing it down. Nothing worse than when you're seeing someone, you're giving up all your goods, your birthday comes along and you don't even know whether this brother is going to remember or you're going to get a card or a present. I, I ain't lying. Like that stuff can hurt. That stuff can hurt because you're kind of like, whoa, it becomes really clear where you are in the pecking order. And so I think it's almost kind of counterculture to be able to ex like hold your boundary. Like, yeah, maybe you don't want a link up one dimensional relationship and that you need to hold that boundary. But for some of us, our sexual urges take over us and we give into the sexual urge. You end up in the situation and then you have to kind of backpedal when things aren't necessarily going well for you or you can see this is going to be a calamity. Um, Un Adiva, I followed you from Judy Love and sorry, I've not been in touch with you. That's fine, Diva. No worries. I'm here. You'll usually find me here as long as God gives me life. You know, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have about why you fall in love with the wrong types. My name is Keely Tavana. I am a psychotherapist. I'm here at Key for Change. This is the head of mind quarters. This is where it all happens. I help people with all manner of life dilemmas, but my fascination is always in intimate relationships. 
Our intimate relationships reveal a wealth about us. The people we go for, the people we desire, the people who we think are out of our league. Do you believe that certain people are out of your league? If you do, that's very interesting. Because sometimes if we're dating someone and we think they're out of our league, we can be incredibly grateful. Because, oh great one, you chose me. Oh humble me. Oh, we put people on pedestals. If you're in an intimate relationship where you put someone on a pedestal and you idolise them, it's highly unlikely. It's highly likely that that will be unhealthy for you. It will be unhealthy for you because humans are humans. And it's only going to be a matter of time before they fall from grace. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. I am here. Any question that you might have about why you go for the wrong types? Why do you fall in love with the wrong types? Do feel free to ask me. Because it is important for some of us, we need an amnesty. We need an amnesty. We need to just hold firm and be single for a little piece. Yeah? There's a benefit to being single, especially if you've gone from mayhem relationship to mayhem relationship. There is a value and benefit in just being on your ones to try and work out how you got yourself into certain predicaments. There is a benefit to that. And additionally, you know, we also have to be mindful of, of kind of like, you know, if you've been hurt and people have taken your kindness for weakness, I think we also need to be mindful if we get scared to love again. If you go to my YouTube video, my YouTube channel, Key for Change, I've got a video about being scared to love again. And actually, one of the things that I caught myself doing, I worked this out through therapy, is I caught myself, I'd go for the wrong types. Another reason we go for the wrong types, see, it's all coming in now, is because actually, if I went for the wrong types, it was safe. I was actually safe in those relationships because I knew it couldn't go anywhere. And it gave me a sense of power and control if I stayed in those wrong relationships. Because to some degree, I was protecting my vulnerability. And so when the relationship would flounder or, or they'd live up to a low expectation I had of them, it was fine because I wasn't hurt. But the reality is, that isn't the way I wanted to love. I want to love wholeheartedly. Big up yourselves if you want to love. Who here wants to love wholeheartedly? Who here doesn't want to be friends with benefits? Can I get a heart and can I get a like out here? Because there's a culture out here of having these kind of uh, one-dimensional relationships. And I don't know about you humans, but I know that this human being is far from one-dimensional. We are multi-dimensional people. Therefore, is it not safe to assume one would like a multi-dimensional relationship? Hey, how are we going? How are we going here? I want to subscribe. I will subscribe to your YouTube channel. Diva, thank you very much. You can find my YouTube channel. That's keyforchange.com. Sexy Sherlock. What's your view on people, on, on that people may continue to go with the wrong type as its sameness and what they're comfortable with? You just answered my question. Yes, yeah, Sexy Sherlock. There's something that I used to do. There's no two ways about it because it kept me safe. Um, but in the, you know, but it was a lackluster, it was lackluster and it was, you know, it just didn't, you know, it, it, it was a very compartmentalized relationship and, and, and the bigger I've grown, you know, you want, you want a companion. Who out here wants a companion? You know, a friend, we need them to be friends. Let's be honest. We need them to be our friend because after the big high, after the epic high, the bubble, the beginning what are we left with? We need to be friends. You need to have a good, I believe, this is my view, we need to be friends. Because if we're going to spend day to day to day to each other, we need to have that relationship as a fundamental. I believe that's very important. No point being in a relationship with someone who wouldn't be your friend. I don't think so. I think there will be limitations. That's my viewpoint. You may have a different one. If you do, please share it with me. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. I am a psychotherapist. I help people with all manner of life dilemmas because it is sticky out here. And the reality is, I believe, it is in the main our relationships that contribute to common mental health problems, depression, sadness, anxiety. If you have a partner that when you see his name come up on your phone, <gasps> your breath take changes, 
or you get a sweaty brow or you feel nervous, this is very important information we have to pay attention to. Very important information. Like I said, for many of us, the fundamental reasons in terms of why we go for the wrong types can be about how we were loved in our younger years. And this is why self-love is the revolution. But your girl key ain't here on the common self-love, get your eyebrows done, self-love, get your nails done. That's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. Self-love is when you have deep feelings for someone, yet you know that they are not good for you and you make choices to practice self-love by creating distance from them. That is what self-love look like. That's what self-care look like. When we say every part of me wants to go and phone this dude, every part of me wants to go and see this person, but I know this person is not good for me. And we choose to stay indoors. We choose to turn the phone off or we choose to block. That is what self-love and self-care looks like. I'm going to revolutionise that for us. It ain't about pampering. It ain't about hot, hot, hot ear candle wax. Big up my girl, Sher, Sher, Six Sexy Sherlock. It's self-love and self-care to your girl, Keely Tavener. Looks very different to how it looks generally out there. It's not about, you know, sitting there saying affirmations or writing your journal. No, we get real down here because life is sticky and if you don't learn to manage the things that stress you out it will engulf you it will overwhelm you it will overtake you and then you'll wake up one day and be like I don't even want to get out of this bed I don't even want to get out of this bed it is serious we have to be conscious so when you allow people up in your heart up in your house up in your womb be mindful of who you are allowing up in your life. Because if they are foolishness, it will mess with your head. And if they give you head stress, maybe it's time to get them out of your bed. It's your girl, Keely Tavana. We're keeping it extra uber real because it's sticky out here. Let's face it. We got a question here. Who's this? Sexy Sherlock. I experience friendships that then turn into relationship. Then it's better think it's better the other way around to be honest i hear you that on sex sexy sherlock i take your words of wisdom almost finished the book you recommending women who love too much and it may all makes so much sense about falling for the wrong types oh my gosh it's a wonderful book if you don't know my mentor encouraged me to read that book women who love too much if you are baffled by you and your relationships I would encourage you to read that book. It's somewhere over there. I could run and get it, but wouldn't look professional if I left the camera, would it? Leave you with an empty screen. Big up, preach sister. Uh, Franz, what we say in France? Can see a question there from you. It says, what about lacking feminine energy? Sometimes we're so used to being end independent that we can man up too much. I could talk about this all day. Yes, the alpha female. The alpha female that intimidates men and has challenges finding a partner because she's either too strong or men feel like you don't need them. My sister Queens, for all my independent sisters out there, we need to learn how to be vulnerable. Some of us are acting super hard super strong, like you don't need nobody. That's not helpful because men like to feel needed. So if you look like you've covered your back all aces, I don't need you for nothing, all that head stress business going on, you're doing yourself the ultimate injustice because we all need somebody to love. Can anybody find me? Who sang that? Somebody, was it Queen? beautiful song can somebody find me somebody to love so for so many of us strong independent women we act like we don't need nobody I don't need you so what do you think that does to a man who wants to come into your life well as far as it's concerned you don't need him so we have to be mindful about being strong but losing our capacity to be vulnerable that's not helpful to us I let them know I let the potential recruits know 
I need you. I am vulnerable. I want your help. I don't do it with my eyes wide open as such, but I think it's really important to let people know that actually, well, I'm very clear. Like I want to build and grow together. I'd love to build and grow with somebody, a companion, a friend, a lover, a homie. I feel like I'm rolling into a song. So I think, Fran, that is a really beautiful question that you have posed. I might be alive that I do next week. I think the issue for strong, independent women, especially when you've been single for a long time, is we don't do vulnerability very well. And sometimes what we actively do is we actively, bizarrely enough, it sounds bizarre, right? We actively communicate to the man, I don't need you. That's not helpful. I don't believe that's helpful. I don't believe it's helpful. I need you to know that I need you. And if you leave my life, I'll be devastated. That's about being vulnerable. And actually, that is about being truthful. A lot of us suppress, especially in this culture of friends with benefits, you know, we, we, we act like we don't have feelings. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Oh, no, we can link up. Yeah, I'm really down with it. No, you're really not down with it because you grow attached, especially if you're getting the good, good. Sorry, we have to be real about these things. We will grow attached. We will grow attached. What's the book called? The book is called Women Who Love Too Much. Shall I go and get it? I know exactly where it is. Let me go and get the book. Women Who Love Too Much. Women Who Love Too Much. Women Who Love Too Much. Here is the book. It's a very good one. If you are baffled about you and you want to know why you keep going from mayhem to mayhem relationship, thank you to my mentor for recommending the book. You know, you girl keeps you. When the highlighter comes out, it's a bestseller for me. It's always a bestseller. Women who love too much. This book, if you, if this book is the real, this book is real. Especially single moms. Book's name is Women Who Love Too Much. Homie, love a friend. That's it, sexy Sherlock. So helpful, Keely. Love that you got it. Yeah, most definitely. So it's your girl, Keely Tavener. I'm here tonight and we're talking about, you know, why we fall in love with the wrong types. And I can say we because I've been there, you know. I'm happy to share my life experiences to help give context. And like I said, if I talk about myself, I never betray anybody's confidence. But do remind you, I am fine. You know, the things I'm talking about are, are many moons ago. I'm in a very sacred place right now where I'm just doing me. I'm doing me because it's all about creation. It's all about creation and development. And I'm very much in that phase. So we give thanks that, that I've got to that point in life, you know, where I've got away from like feeling desperate and, and feeling that I, I really must have a boyfriend or there's something wrong with me. Why does nobody want me? Maybe it's because I needed to work on myself, you know? And so working on yourself, I believe, you know, I think, I think singles get a really hard time. I think we're constantly made to feel inadequate. Like, oh, you're still single. And, and that can be very difficult because it's almost as if people in intimate relationships have got it sussed. And we know that's a lie too, because we all know people who are in relationships and you're like, boy, if that's what they're in, I'd rather stay by myself. And that's the reality because I've seen many people in relationship and the relationship is not healthy and they're in relationships for lots of different reasons. One of the reasons might be about fear. And if you are interested in your relationship with fear, I also need to remind you because my assistant has told me that I'm not good at reminding people I will be having my master, my first mastermind in December on fear and if you're interested it's a free to sign up click the link below sign up for my workshop my mastermind course on fear I'm going to do some teaching I'm going to do some teaching you're going to get some practical tips to go away with to help you because the reality of it is so many of us we're not always conscious of it but we live in fear it's a bit like recently you know I had one crawl out of the woodwork with lockdown ladies give me a heart give me a like if you've had some people crawl out of the woodwork because of lockdown they must be on the little endless scroll thinking which one will I try which one let me try swipe that one let's see if she responds let's see if I'm still blocked and I had a one come out of the woodwork recently and I just had to say to myself in a very cutthroat way I think for me 
you know, I'm, I'm learning to be what, what I would call ruthless. For me, it feels ruthless because I've always been compassionate and understanding. However, now in 2020, in the seriousness of these times that we're in, bro, if you didn't step up and present yourself as an individual with values, morals and decency, I ain't got no energy, no time. I'm getting very cutthroat about this. I'm sorry to use the word cutthroat, but I can't think of anything more fitting. And so I I have no, I'm unashamed about that because I have to be my own best friend. And I think for some of us, we need to develop that discipline to say no to people that aren't good for us. It's a, it's a victory when you do. And I know that when, you know, when I block, then you stop, the, the head starts, doesn't it? Oh, I miss them. Or you look at your phone and no one calls. There's no text to get giddy about. But I tell you what else there ain't. There ain't none of that head stress or chewing over the funny comments that they said or when they went AWOL and that's done. Some of us need to create that space for ourselves. But the challenge is for so many of us, we think that we will be fulfilled when we have this relationship. We think that, so we project all our ambitions and our dreams onto one relationship. And the reality is, any relationship with that level of projection is doomed to be under pressure, is doomed to fail. Let's call it what it is. Let's stop messing about, Keely. Say it like it is. You know you do that. Friends, be compassionate for yourself instead. You're so refreshing. On a diva, ah, oh, thank you very much. You know, I'm Keely Tavern. I'm sorry, but if I'm very truthful with you, I believe I'm in the, the business of life and death, man. It's about helping people to look at their life situations from a different angle so you can be like, oh, that's why I do that. I'm really about helping people to make sense of their situation. There is a reason why you fall in love with the wrong people. The challenge is for many of us, we don't know it and we walk in blind and we walk into similar situations again and again and again. And it's hurtful. As we get older, we've got responsibilities. You know, we don't want to be introducing our kids to random, random, randoms, you know. Same time, we don't want to keep going to premier ins, premier ins, premier ins with randoms. You know, we want to build a life together. I know I'm speaking to people here. I know you want to build a life with somebody. I don't care if nobody don't say nothing. I know this. So we have to be conscious about what is it about us that means we attract these people in our lives. Why do we do it? Often we fear singleness. We fear being alone. And sometimes this insanity of what goes on in this with people who ain't genuine, who ain't upfront, who ain't truthful. It can be so, that, that's why, you know what? I just rather this solitude. I rather this solitude. Let me create. Let me read. Let me find ways to just help humans to live their best life. Let me put it that way. Got a couple of stories. I get disgusted nowadays by exes that didn't value me in the past. Don't be disgusted by your exes that didn't value in the past. Be, be grateful for them because they're teaching you life lessons. I'm very grateful to, you know, my, my exes. Because without that trauma, I wouldn't be where I am now. That's how you make your pain purposeful, my people. Remember, my course, Pain Into Purpose, is everything that I've ever gone through. I've put it into a course to help people understand the value of making your adverse experiences work for you. The challenge is, when you've been through adversity, you have to take responsibility. You have to look at what did you do that contributed to your calamity. Now, if you don't want to do introspection and you just want to keep blaming Bob, 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 then I'm not going to be the person you're going to want to work with. Because the reality is you have to look at you and what you do that contributes to the situation. I know things I used to do in my past was I used to think that if I loved and cared and went above and beyond, that they would value me. And they didn't. Whose fault is that? Not this. They had a donkey, so they rode it. That's the reality of it. Because if you keep putting yourself out there, people will abuse you. So the reality is, how do we begin to look after ourselves? And one way we can do that, my friends, is you know your girl Kita, you this all the while. 
Don't be scared to use that block feature. Sometimes you've got to be your own best friend. But for some of us, we need to change our phone numbers. Yeah? Sometimes we just need our clear app. We need our whole clear app. You can't catch me on that. Num that number is only... So when your phone rings, you know it's the sanity line, innit? Because you know you only got good folk on the line. It's the call the sanity. Only special folk get that number. No, no randoms. No randoms. The exes, they ain't got that. And if any one of your tribe lets the number out and that old ex that's no good comes back to you, you know you've got a loser in your crew. It's your girl, Keely Taverner. Tonight, I am taking any of your questions about why we go for the wrong types. Happens to lots of us. It's one of those things we keep secret. I believe it's one of those things that leads us into anxiety and depression and all of that. It's one of the reasons why I do these topics. I want people to understand how we do it to ourselves. Another way we do it to ourselves is because when we see the writing on the wall, we want to act like we can't read. So you ignore it. You push it to one side or you hope for the best. This is one of the ways we end up sad and depressed because we don't want to accept the situation as it is. Maya Angelou told us, when people show you who they are, believe them. We don't want to believe them. So we begin to live in our fantasy and in hope. Fantasy and hope. Those two become a cocktail for problems. It's one of the reasons why you keep holding on, because you're full of fantasy and hope. In addition, your ego is also holding on because you're scared. But let me tell you, every time I've blocked one of them bozos, I ever tell you I have? I have a victory. Now, Keely's lower self don't like it, but my higher self is like, well done you. That is exactly what self-love looks like. And some of us, you got your fancy lashes and your eyebrow and everything done, but you don't truly practice self-love because you still allow people around you who violate. Some people can sense women's weaknesses like vulnerability or a lack of character but Fran in terms of vulnerability you have to have the skill of being able to discern that's why you have to know that when someone comes around you they get access to you they get access to your preciousness and no random Tom Dick or Harry is getting that so you, that's, that's the benefit of being friends with someone so you build a friendly rapport rather than let's just get it on like there's a benefit to holding that back, holding back on that. Uh, before the block feature, I used to name the contact no, so I didn't answer by mistake. Oh, you mean? Yes, most definitely. Exactly true. No, you know, but sometimes, let's be honest, we can block people, but we all know that some of us are blocking, unblocking, unblocking, block, block, blocking, blocking, unblock, unblock, block, deleting, re-adding, saving, you know, we also have to work out how we contribute to that ourselves and really truly practicing self-love and self-care can get boring. Sometimes I look at my phone and I'm like, I have to turn it off and on again, make sure it's still working. That's the reality of the situation because it's, it's a kind of deadline. But you know what? It's not a stress line. I don't need stress. I don't need the stress, man. Life is for living and it's very serious times and we have to be very conscious about what we do with our energy. Remember, my people, everything is energy. So if you're using your energy on situations that you cannot change, then it's only a matter of time before you become sad and depressed. It's maths. One, two, three, four. Simple as. And a lot of us hold on to situations that we can't change and we will it to change and it won't change. That's how you make yourself sad. I don't know if your doctor's telling you that. They're probably just giving you a load of tablets. Um... Mm, oh la la, many of us end up dating the same type of man in different bodies. Most definitely, oh la la, most definitely you call him Bob, Dick, Jerry, J, J, J. but it, that's what I said, like, it's always about trying to find the common thread. One of the common threads I had was going for emotionally unavailable men. And, you know, beginning to learn that was beautiful because what happened when I learned that is I began to see how I would reject people who were emotionally available. When you find your type, when you know your type, the common thread that binds them all, the beauty of that is you also see how you reject people who could give you what you need. But the reality is, as I said before, what you need and what you want are two different things. For many of us, we go pursuing what we want when actually it ain't good for us. And what we, what we need, we reject, we ridicule, we don't call back because we want things on our terms. 
Your girl Key is here to tell you the inconvenient truth. Sometimes it doesn't work on your terms. And as I keep experiencing life and going about my, my, my life experience and saying yes to new things, no to old things, I am just fascinated about what I continue to learn about myself. And it's my hope that you also begin to, you know, enjoy the experiences of life where we let go quicker. We don't hold on to things that are bad for us. We surrender it. We let go and we trod on with passion and a purpose for our lives. Because I believe having purpose in your life is the antidote to common mental health problems, sadness and depression. I have purpose. I have meaning in my life. And I'm very blessed to have that. And I want that for you too, because it will revolutionise your life. You can shift your energy to worrying about things you can't change to what you can be in control of. We give thanks to the Most High. It's your girl Key. I'm here tonight getting spiritual. Feel a touch of God today. So it's 5 to 11. I've had a watch probably a 14 hour day and you know what I'm very blessed because I love what I do I'm here to inspire the people if this video has spoken to you if you have any questions about what you're going through please feel free to inbox me in addition you'll see the link for my first masterclass on overcoming fear it's your girl key I'm here to make a difference I'm here to inspire people I'm here to get you thinking I'm here to get you to look at your problem from a different angle so just when you look at your problem from a different angle you realize oh I never thought of it like that that's very good for you that's very good for you if you could look at it from a different angle maybe then you won't be depressed because you'll see it very differently it's your girl Keely Tavener I'm here to inspire people I wish you well be conscious learn to be your own best friend remember my people if it doesn't add to your life, it depletes from your life. It's simple maths. And sometimes you have to make choices that you don't like. Sometimes you have to learn to defy yourself. And some of you lot need to come off of them damn apps because we know there's a whole heap of charlatans out there looking to take advantage of us lovely ladies looking for love and companionship. Some of us need to unsubscribe and uninstall them apps. Some of us need to go and find a stranger on the street and say hello and start a conversation face to face with somebody you know who look like a real person. Because some of them are telling you some whoppers. Back to Zen. It's your girl, Keely Tavener. I think it's time I go home, look after yourself, and remember, some of them apps ain't good for your life. Take care of you, because if you don't, who will? <laughs>